Hi there, this is Heather with Autism Chrysalis. Here's a pattern that I see with quite a few of my clients, and I'm wondering if this might be true for you. I'm thinking of someone who wants friends and tries to reach out to text someone to message them, but questions whether this would be a good time, whether they would be interrupting, or whether the other person really wants to hear from them again. Questioning after you had a good conversation, um, whether that was real, whether they ever wanted to hear from you again, or if you contact them if they would be upset by it, or just not care, or if you'd be getting in the way if you went out for drinks with people after a get-together. Maybe you think about messaging someone on Slack about a common interest, and you wonder if you're going to come across as weird or clingy or inappropriate, or if you're contacting them too much, even though it's only been once or twice, or perhaps never. And you question so much that you end up not doing it at all. You don't reach out, or very rarely, and you still feel like it's too much. Um, often underneath that there's a painful thought that's going on, and sometimes it's that I'm not quite interesting, or I'm not unique, or they really wouldn't want to spend time with me. Um, when you can't locate a specific reason for those thoughts to develop, like there wasn't a specific trauma or you didn't grow up in an abusive household, sometimes it can feel like you don't have a good reason for it and therefore we're not allowed to feel those things, but they always come from somewhere. But here's the thing, those thoughts that cause us pain can feel so true but they're usually not. But when we believe them, they cause the things that we complain about most in our lives. Like, why can't I reach out to people? Why can't I make friends? Why can't they I just send this freaking email? But there was always a reason why those thoughts started. And it was usually beneficial to us at that time. Maybe socializing was just damn confusing. And by not engaging as much, you avoided, had, avoided having to deal with all of those genuinely complicated social interactions that you didn't know how to navigate and that you didn't have a guide to help you with at the time. For example, you see other people doing this and you kind of figure out what the social expectation is, but it's not all the time. And there's this other situation, but under these circumstances, it goes this way or in this situation, it plays out like this, and here's another exception. Which one's the right answer? I don't know. I get that so much. So by staying in this questioning loop, that doubting, you manage to avoid all of that. All of the negative reactions, the embarrassment, the thoughts that, oh, they really wouldn't want to talk to me anyway. I'm not that interesting. I'm not unique. So they wouldn't want to hear from me. And then you don't have to engage in those things that cause confusion and overwhelm and lead to the missteps and the laugh getting laughed at and embarrassment and all of that stuff that sucks. So those thoughts can be useful at the time, but they don't apply anymore. It's been a long time. You've learned a lot more about how to interact with people. You're a lot better at it. And you're also better at dealing with discomfort and with how to deal with missteps in social interactions. So it's those painful thoughts that if we work with them and can diffuse those, those thoughts themselves, find how they're not actually true anymore. Maybe they were never true, but they were helpful for a while. Um, reducing at least the intensity of it, maybe even making the thoughts over time fade away, that can make an enormous difference in how you're able to socialize at this point and going forward. Because it reduces the stress, it reduces the doubt, it reduces the pain, so your brain is able to, um, to be able to come up with other options, to be able to entertain other ideas. Like maybe at the time I didn't have the resources, the support that I needed to understand this, but I've gotten a lot better at understanding people. And I can try 
it out. I could reach out to this person that I've been thinking about reaching out to. And if it goes great, then awesome. If it doesn't go so well, I know how to handle that. And maybe there'll be someone else, maybe a different situation, or maybe I could come up with a different way to phrase things um, that would come across as less clingy, but still open. Anyway, um, there, it opens up new possibilities is all I'm trying to say here. All right. I'm wondering if this brought up anything for you, if this feels familiar. Um, and I hope you have a near a wonderful day.